Hello, everyone. This is Will Faber from Archer Ride, and uh, we're here again today with um, Ron and Darcy um, Grancini. And we're going to see their horses. They were starting off with Trigger, who's looking very good. It's a little cold back there. 82 where I am here in California. I think 30 where you guys are over there. Yeah, it's about yeah. 30. Yeah. 30 and damp. 30 and damp. Perfect riding weather. Perfect, perfect. They got three jackets on. <laughs> So Trigger's been doing really good. We had some really good sessions this week, um, and we'll see. How, I'm looking forward to getting on him. It's been months since I've been yeah. actually on a horse, so it's going to be exciting today. That's our goal today. So we're going to start off with some work in hand. So for those of you who, are, who have not seen this horse before, if you haven't seen previous lessons, he was quite hollow. He was an old um, horse that did, sounds like it did raining and uh, barrel racing or something like that. And, uh, yeah, all sorts of Western disciplines. All kinds uh, of and just not, not actually trained anything particular. So kind of just, just kind of jammed into horse. a frame, hollow back. So he's done a lot of work. Uh, just looking the, as it walks here, just looking at, the back there is lower back behind the saddle there. We see that really coming up nicely now. We used to see a really big hole right there. So that's really starting to fill out nicely, as is the neck. And if we watch a horse like this, you can see that he's quite straight behind. As we say, he doesn't have much ability to flex his hocks. That's why it's so important with a horse like this to get them working over their backs so that you can, because this horse hollow would just simply move his back legs like they were tent poles, so to speak. And, uh, you wouldn't get any thrust. So the thrust is dependent on how much they can actually bend those hocks. So we have to optimize that and that will only be optimized by getting the horse stretching so it can lift its back. You can see even here, the stretcher, the deeper he goes into the stretch, the more active and the bigger step he takes. So that's what we're looking for. Dressage is always about trying to maximize what we have in the horses. Most horses can move much better than, than maybe people think they can. Go ahead and go large now on that walk. Good. And try to make it a little more active there. We get a little bigger step, trying to maximize that. Really nice. And let's just keep that going all the way down the next long side. Just keep nice, just nice and straight the way you have him, and just keep trying to get a little bit bigger step out of him all the time. And then when you get to the other end, you'll turn by the center line down here by us and do a leg yield to the left. reaching really nicely into the contact there. And notice how relaxed Ron's reins are. There's just the weight of the rein between he and the horse, but not a lot of slack. And that's what we're looking for. So we don't want backwards tension. So no matter what level we are, we, that's the contact that if the horse has been trained correctly, it will go on just the weight of the rein. Really nice there. Keep trying to get that contact with the outside rein. There you go, lifting that up. And a little leg yield from there. Good, last three steps were good. Let's do that again at the other end. Turn a little more on the center line so we have a little more room. Okay. Yeah, I'm having a little hard time hearing you because I got uh, my okay. hood on. Let me use my helmet, so. Good, keep getting contact with that outside rain. Okay. A little too much inside rain, so let the neck straighten a little bit. We had a little too much bend at the shoulder there. There you go, like that. So remember, we never want the bit, there to be more bend at the shoulder than there is in the middle of the horse's back or at the point where you would sit behind the withers. Really nice there. Now back onto a big circle here at this end. <clears throat> so now let's experiment with bringing the pole up a little bit now that we have a nice big swinging walk. So let's let the pole up. We're gonna just shorten your range a little bit. We wanna keep the same step as much as possible. So as we bring the pole up, 
we try to keep the same step going. He may or may not be able to do that. So as he develops, he'll be able to raise the neck higher and higher and be able to keep the same step like that, quite good. And for him, that's probably pretty good right there. Up a little bit like that, very nice, very nice. Now let it go all the way back down and let him lengthen again. So as he goes all the way back down, just a little tap to get a little more activity so he even steps a little bigger. And then go ahead and go large down the next long side again and then come back to me on the other side. You're gonna bring him up a little bit in the frame through the short side and then shoulder in or full shoulder forward down the next long side. Keep watching those hind legs that for those of you who are watching yeah, that activity. We're looking for that to be like a metronome. Kick, 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 kick. Always remember that the rhythm, the horse's rhythm, tells you how correct or how much value the movement you're having in terms of developing the horse is going to be. So if you lose the rhythm, you know you are losing the gymnastic quality of the exercise. There you go, like that. Just a little bit too much bend in the neck again. Take a little more contact with your outside rein, a little less inside, like that. Step up to him there. There you go, like that. That's better there. So once again, always remembering not more bend in the neck than in the middle of the body, the middle of the back there. Nice there. And we'll make one more circle here at this end. And when you come to the center line, you may ask him to halt. Let's bring him up a little bit. So he's a little bit up when we ask him to halt this time and see if he'll stay there and soften in your hand. Yeah, so about like that's right for him. No, no higher than that. Maybe let it drop a little bit. He's starting to shorten up too much behind. Good, right, right there. Now ask him to halt. So say ho. Oh. And keep him soft right there. Not bad. Came up a little bit. Not bad. We're gonna walk. We're gonna do that again. One more time. One more time. Go ahead and uh, just continue in the same direction. And we're gonna take a little more time this time. So you want me to so you want me to bring yeah, up a little to, bit and get Yeah, just there. up a little bit. And what you want you want to do is just keep your hands lightly softening him, right through the halt. Bring him up a little bit more. Get your outside rein. Make sure you have the outside rein there. Now ask him to halt. And hold. And just keep softening by just giving and taking, keeping his hands alive a little bit. There you go, like that. And keep hand. asking and ho, just giving and taking a little bit there. In the hand, not bad at all that time. Good, and pat him on the neck and we can change direction. So what we're getting, what we want to get to the point where, where we, at whatever frame that we stop him in, the goal would be in time that he will, he will not change that frame again or try to drop down, that he'll just stay right where he is and halt with a light feel of his mouth. I need to take my hood off so you can actually hear what yeah, I'm saying. I'll suffer with the cold here. Okay. Here, buddy. We'll start off the same way here. Just work towards that big stretch. Go ahead and go large. We'll take him around once, just opening up this walk as you go large, letting him stretch all the way down, just like we did on the other side, trying to find that place where we get the most activity, the most step, the most flexion in the hocks as he steps up and under like that. Go ahead and go large now down the long side. And this time when you get to the other end, turn by the center line and do a leg heel to the right. So as we go large here, asking for the big walk like that, that's getting really nice there like that. For him, that's very good. Nice there. Oh, very good. 
Good job there. Very nicely done. I'll stretch him out here. Now, on the circle down here, we're going to do the same thing we did in the other direction of bringing him up on the circle there a little bit. So we'll just try to find what would be his working position, which is how high can we bring the pole without the trot slowing down, or the walk slowing down or losing the stride. That's really quite nice right there. Yeah, very good right there. And see how he's softening at the jaw and pole. We don't see any tension in the underside of his neck. Really nice, like that right there. Quite good, quite good. Now let him stretch all the way down from that. Very nice, big step for him. Go ahead and go large now down the next long side in the stretch and then bring him up across the short end at the other side and come back to me in the shoulder four position. Start to bring him up as we go through the short section here. Nice, right about right there is about as good as it can get. Right there is really good. Now, a little shoulder forward down the next long side. We'll try to keep that position. Very nice. See if you can get your outside hand up a little bit so you can get that contact with that outside rein there. You go like that. Right there is good. Good now. Really good. You've gotten much better at this. Really nice. Now, again, onto the circle here at this end. Let him stretch all the way down. Like that, all the way down there on the floor. Beautiful. I'll go ahead and let him, you know, if you get the stretch, get, get the stretch all the way down once more. There you go, like that. Get a little tap, get a little more activity, push the hind quarters away from you a little bit when you lose the stretch. If you want to get it a little bit deeper, we've got to get that hind leg to push up through the back a little more like that. Good. Even a little bit deeper yet. Yeah, get a little contact with that outside rein. There you go. Now we're good. good. Now go ahead and bring him back up into the working position. And when you feel him nice and soft in the reins, yeah, right about there, that's really good. And you're going to ask him for a halt, and you're just going to soften him with your reins a little bit without the Becoming a pull, don't just clamp your hand. Very nice, very nice. No resistance there. That's plenty for today. Give him a little something to pat him on the neck. Enough of that. Very nicely done. He really seems to enjoy his work. Good boy. Okay, let's see a little on the lunge line. That was great today. Really nice. He was definitely ready to go right there for you. And okay. starting to work up a little bit now. Hey guys, we, we grab the. So that's always for everybody watching. You know, we want to get them to stretch all the way down. But as soon as we do, we start coming back up. Now, if they can't come up, then we let them back down again. It's as simple as that. In time, they will be able to. You now, we can really stand here and just standing back and looking at the horse here. You can, his withers are starting to come up a little bit. He's just got a more kind of four square stance about him.
Let yourself get back behind his eye just a little bit. You're a little bit forward on him. There you go. What a good boy. Very nice. Look how nice and regular and four beat that walk is. Very nice. Very nicely done. And you can ask him to trot. He got to that place really quickly yeah. today. You can see how when he lifts his head a little bit when he starts there, that's just him, his old thing of trying to just pull himself along, but that quickly went away. Really nice. Very nice today. Very consistent. How easily he's bending in this direction. Now, this sort of, now he, you, his other way is the more difficult direction. But this is really very good. That's really good, really good, right there. Really nicely done. Let's take a little look at his canner and see what that's like. Whenever you like, just come into the wall, ask him to canner. If he canners on the wrong lead, just quietly bring him back to a trot again. Won't make a big thing of it. Easy, buddy. And just let him stretch back out again before we ask again. Nice. And now, as you come to the next wall, ask him to canter. Good. Much better. There we go. Not bad. Keep it going for a moment. See if he tries to find it. Keep it going for just a moment if you can. That's enough. And bring him back to a trot again. And trot. And trot. Good boy. Not good. Not fantastic yet, but certainly better than it was. And once again, just let him slow down a little bit. It's going a little fast after that and just getting consistent in the stretch once again. Just not quite ready to do much cantering yet, but it's getting there. Get this more and that's all you want to do. Always remember that, you know, if you have a horse with a bad canter, it never improves it to canter more. <laughs> it just makes the horse sore. So if the horse can't unite itself in the canter, you need to go back and you know that you need to do more work in the trot to build that strength to allow it to do so. So I want to see him to slow down just a little bit, bring him a little closer to you once, getting him to yield his hindquarters a little bit. There we go. There we go. And as he slows down, then let the circle get larger. So the horse's reward is always just making it easier for them. They start to trust us. Oh, if I do what he says, well, it'll be easier than what I want to do. <laughs> and they are smart enough to know that. Uh, 
Yeah, it's getting there now. Very nice. Good job. Now ask him back to the walk. And walk. And, and just let him stretch out in the walk there for a moment. Good boy. What about legs to come in on this foot? Yep. <laughs> well, that's better than them wanting to run away from me. So he's thinking that if he's not stretching where you want him to be, to try to yield those hindquarters a little bit, just like you do in the working hands, you'll get a little closer to him, asking to push the hindquarters a little bit outside. So anytime that you can't quite get the frame, then we know we need to get that inside rein pushing up into the back a little bit more. And that's what the shoulder in is for. So we bring him a little shoulder four on the circle. I'll just wait for him to stretch all the way down there again. Yeah, it's getting there. There we go, like that. Again, a little bit deeper into the stretch. There we go, like that. Good. Now asking to halt and change directions. Yeah, whenever he goes into a canter, it's always hard to get back to that nice rhythm he's all Exactly. So about. that's why we don't do it very often. <laughs> you know, we check it every week or so because it definitely sends him uh, not to a good place. And you can see how doing more of that would not do anything but make the horse sore <laughs> the way you canter. So once again, if they can't canter over the back, don't keep doing it. This was his more difficult side, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. This is the yeah. side that he would always bend to the outside, counter right. flex. And yeah, this is looking much better, even just in the walk. Keep trying to yield those hindquarters away from you a little bit. All right. I like that. Trying to widen that circle a little bit, but keep trying to yield the hindquarters at the same time, like that. Much better now. And ask him to trot. You see how he starts off by pulling a little bit with his shoulders there. But he quickly stops doing that and starts to swing a little bit. So a horse's ability to make transitions has to do with their strength. So of course, just like with the canner, you don't want to do a lot of transitions until the horse can do them. And when they can, they just do it. But doing them over and over and over again only ends up in shortening the horse's stride.
It's getting there. Try to bring him a little closer to you so you can yield the hindquarters a little bit again, like that. And as soon as he does, then let him have a bigger circle. That's getting there, but boy, that's so much better. So in this direction, the source used to go around completely bent to the right the whole time. So that we can see that the beginning to give. And that has to do with the horse's back. Once again, everyone, if your horse can't lift its back, it can't unlock its back. A horse that's down, the back is locked. You can try that yourself by extremely arching your back and see if you can bend to the side. You'll find that you won't be able to, and neither can a horse. This is looking really nice now, right there. Good job. Again, every time he comes up and like that, just bring him a little closer to you again, yield the hind quarter. It's always the same thing. Really nice now, that's looking really good. That's the best I've seen this trot look in this direction. Really nicely done. And let him walk. And walk. And walk. What a good boy. Okay, let's bring out our rider. So what we're gonna do today with this horse is that we've been putting Darcy on him because she weighs much less than Ron. And uh, he has a really hard time dealing with the weight. So we'll see, today our goal is to get her up and see if she can do a little bit, if he's comfortable. If he's comfortable with her weight, we'll try with his weight and see how he does. We'll change back to our more, uh, his easier side for this. Waiting for the rider. Waiting for the rider. <clears throat> the rain starts to Old Darcy. <laughs> We're gonna warm you up. Are you guys hearing me on a loudspeaker or in your ears in an earphone? What did you say? I said, do you hear me on a loudspeaker or through an earphone? Uh, through the loudspeakers. Loudspeaker, yeah. Yeah, yeah we got uh, speakers in the, in, in the arena. I certainly would expect no less from you. <laughs> Are we all set? Just about. I have to get a whip, right? There's one out there already. I'll use mine. Make sure you put the reins actually on. That one time I got on and I pulled the rein a little bit and it <laughs> popped right off. It wasn't even connected. Okay. Second. Uh, 
Sure. No, you. I thought you were gonna read it. Or did you want me to do it? Well, I was gonna. Yeah. You both were fine. If you're gonna do that. All right. Where are you going? <laughs> oh. Sorry about that. <laughs> you and Karen, you had this banter when you guys were doing stuff. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> it's like a comedy TV show here. Yep. <laughs> Thought you were doing it. <laughs> the first time Karen told us to lunge each you, other. Can you uh, hold? Yeah, I hold him. I'll hold him. I joked with her that it was like part horse training, part marriage counseling. Yeah. Want to take a look? <laughs> All right, just starting off in a walk. So rider taking over a little more control all the time, you know, in terms of moving him out in the circle, that sort of thing. So that should be what you're doing now. So he doesn't have to do so much of that. So you're beginning to move him off that inside leg, a little leg heel to the outside. And just get a little feel of the range. We're never trying to force the horse in a position, but shorten your range enough. You can feel his mouth and just keep your fingers alive a little bit, asking him to soften. In other words, just like squeezing them a little bit, like working a piece of clay in your hand without ever becoming too tense. So we just soften. And we usually soften on one side and relax the other. There you go. Now he's starting to get there. Now as he stretches out, you get even more. Really nice. Starts to come up a little bit. Then you know you need to push the hindquarters a little bit to the outside so he engages that inside hind leg. That's how we get the back up. That's what shoulder in and leg yields are for. Yes, there you go. Good boy. We always have, to re always have to remember with lateral work that it's actually quite hard on horses' legs to do lateral work. So it's not something that we want to spend. That's why we, we do it in walk to begin with. But we don't just spend hours and hours doing it. You know, we use shoulder in or leg heel for a moment to get the back up, and then we let the horse straighten back out. So we just don't, our goal is to go straight, Over. not to go sideways. But sometimes we go sideways to engage the inside hind leg. I like that. There Really nice there. Now he's starting to give nicely to you like that. That's what I want to see all the way out there like that. Good boy. Good boy. First, there you go. So every time he loses a little bit, starts to come up and hollow, you feel the, the walk sort of dissipating. Then go back to your little bit of the shoulder in, a little bit of a leg yield. There you go. Good there you go like that. And as soon as you get there, then let everything relax. Comes up again, then we ask again. But when he's right, we do nothing at all. Even if that means only for a stride or two. Good boy. You always have to remember that if we're pulling on a horse's mouth, we're punishing it. So if you're riding by pulling on his mouth all the time, you are constantly punishing the horse. Wonder why we see so many horses that don't want to move and so many horses with kissing spine. Over. Really nice, like that. Good job. Huh. I was just
just going to say maybe you should reinforce what I'm trying because he's not really reacting to my leg or the whip really that much. Yeah. Now, remember, if that is true, then you want to ask a little stronger. So remember, we always have what we call the circle progression of the aid. So if you touch and nothing happens, the next time you touch, it has to be a little stronger. And then the next time, a little stronger. And then when it responds, so it's always this circle progression. The next time we ask, it's always starting with that very lightest touch again. Really nice there. That's going to be a really nice walk. The beauty of the walk, it's hard to do too much of it. I have a horse walking over its back, it can walk for quite a while. And even endurance horses and things are mostly trained in the walk. Really nice, like that. That's really nice. And now it's just ask him to trot. So don't try to hold the frame or anything. Just ask him to trot and let him figure out how he's going to make that transition. He may want to bring his head up a little bit for the first stride or two. Because he does that when he's just on his own anyway. So it's, he's still not quite strong enough like that. We'll just keep going, see if he gets over the problem. Come on. And uh, there you go, like that. He wants to revert. So I mean, about having difficulty carrying weight. So we have to see if he can figure it out. There we go, just like that. Doesn't take long. He starts to relax. Okay, keep it going. So you can see now, those of you watching this, see how the whole underside of his neck became very tense because he started pulling himself with his shoulders instead of propelling himself with his back end. Keep going for a moment. I think he'll. We'll, I think he'll be able to work his way out of this in a moment. If he doesn't, we'll come back to the walk. So keep going for the time being. There we go. There he starts to find it. And just soften him ever so lightly with that inside rein, just softening a little bit by giving and taking. There you go. Now he's starting to find it. Good. There he goes, like that. And watch how the whole horse changes. Watch how that underside of the neck became completely relaxed. And watch how he has flexion in his hocks now. There you go. Keep that going like that. Really nicely done. Really nicely done. I like that. Really nice. There we go. Now just let him come back to a walk. Let him walk. Let him walk. Take your time. Keep there you go. We don't sit in the saddle until he starts to come back to walk. Then we gradually ease our seat back into the saddle at this level. And let him walk out and stretch again. That was really good. Very instructive, I think, for all of you watching this. You can see the difference between how a horse looks when it's upside down and when it is not. You can see this horse go from one to the other. Uh -uh. Okay. That's it. Once again, ask him to yield those hindquarters a little bit. Move him out in that larger circle. There you go. He starts to swing out like that. There's what we're looking for, like that. Very nice. Uh -uh. Like that. Good job. Really good. All the way there. Really nicely done. Now ask him to try it again. Good boy. Very nice, much better. So also a perfect example, if you see this horse trotting now, he looks perfectly sound. But if you saw him trotting a moment ago, he kind of looked like he was off. But that's what we call a bridle lameness. There's nothing we can do about a horse that actually is lame. 
but sometimes they're just so out of whack in their own bodies that they look like they're lame, which is kind of the case what we call a bridal lameness. So if the horse goes sound, when we get him to go over the back, so there's really nothing wrong with it. Just once again, it's a, just a, an extreme um, discomfort in the body of the horse, if you will. Really nice there. Keep that going a moment longer. All the way back on the stretch again. Really nice. And now let him walk again. And walk. And you just close your reins a little bit, just giving and taking a little bit, that's all. Just like that and right back into the stretch again. Good job. And now again, Trot. I think he heard you. <laughs> it gets there quickly like that. Good job. Sorry, Jupiter. Very good. Like that. That's what we want right there. Like, very nice. So he's actually learning here how to solve his own body issues, if you will. He's figured it out. Well, if I go here, this isn't so difficult. Very nice. And now ease him back to a walk again. Boy, and then stretch one more time. Get that deep stretch. Very nice. Good. And you may halt there on the center line, and we're ready to switch riders. I want to keep going in the same direction here with him. And, oh. and we'll see if he can handle Ron's weight today. Hey, oh. Good boy. It just doesn't matter. I never get too worried about, you know, once again, I, I expect that it should take a little time at this level for a horse to halt. I never want them to just jam on the brakes at this point. Yeah. Or at any point. <laughs> That's how we destroy their legs. How many down do you want to go? Twelve. Sir. What's that? Twelve. Twelve or thirteen? Yeah. Looks like you had it on thirteen at one point, though. Yeah, twelve is good. Mm. Okay. Okay. He always looks like he's looking into the camera. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing to me? Hey, buddy. Him over? Yeah, let's see how this goes. Okay. Yep. Ready, Trigger? Come on. Come on. Walk. There you go. You ready to get on, Ron? It's been yeah. such a long time. <laughs> been since the clinic, I think. You got on on the clinic? Was. I don't even remember you getting on. I think I did the first day. Oh. I think I did the first day. See if I remember how I did on the horse. Walk on. Walk on. 
very nice. It was off to a good start. Yeah, really great start. Look at that. Yeah. It's a pretty nice working walk you got there. <laughs> really nice. Let me stretch on out. Very nice. Now it's interesting because he really seemed to want to get his back up underneath you there. That was very good. See what happens when we get to trot. That's really quite nice. Let him get a little longer in the neck. He's kind of over flexing a little bit. So we'll let the neck out a little more, give him a little more length in the reins. There, I like that. So we can I want him to stretch the nose out and down forward a little more. There you go. Good. Okay, no time like the present. Ask him to trot and let's see what happens. That's the way, just don't touch his mouth and just start rising with it. Correct your rising diagonal, sit one bounce and change so you can get on the outside one. There you go, like that. Just keep going for a minute. Keep going, keep going. Give a little more rain. You're hold, kind of holding him up a little bit too much. Give him a little more rain. You can soften him a little bit with your fingers, but just be sure you're not holding him back at all. There you go, there he goes, there he goes. Keep working that, easy. Just feel a little bit your inside rain a little bit if you can. There you go, like that. There, keep it going. They're starting to want to stretch. Good, start to let him have a little more rain now. It's really good, you're getting there. Keep going. There. There we go. Really nice. Starting to get there now. There. Good. Really good. There. Good job. Keep going. You're doing great. There. Let, him, let, let, his, let his neck get longer now a little bit if you can. There. Really good. Every time it comes up, just know you want to just feel that inside rein a little bit and bring him out with that inside hind, inside leg, pushing the hindquarters over a little bit, always yielding. That's getting really good, really good. Keep that going, loving it. It's really good. See if he does it, back into it again. There. There. There, good job, good job, good job. Really nice. Really nice. Keep it going. There we go, right there. Really good job. Good, give him a little bit. That's it. Uh, really good. Really good. Now easy him back to a walk. And walk. Take, take your time. Keep rising so you don't just slam your weight on him. Just take your time. Just give and take a little bit. Good. And right back into the stretch, back into the walk. That was fantastic, Bron. That was a good ride. <laughs> that was a good ride. Keep that going. Just down the circle in the stretch. Try to let his neck stretch out in front of you, just in the walk. That's it. That's it. Good. Now try to let him have that neck. Let him stretch out in front of you a little bit. There. There. Really good. All the way out there. Keep giving more range. We get his neck out in front of you a little bit. Used to get a little bit longer yet still. Nice. There we go. And once again, give to him. Let him give him more rain now. Let him have a little more rain out in front of him there. Keep trying to slip yeah. it out. And finish it. Still want his neck to get longer. Brian's talking to you. Yeah, there you go. Keep trying to get his neck. There you go. I want him to stretch deeper so he gets his back up underneath you a little more. There. But even like you could see here, with your weight, his back sunk a little more than with her. So he still has strengthening issues here. But certainly much, much better.
There we go, like that. Just looks nice and relaxed in the walk. That's all I want to see happen. There, like that. That's it. Let him have a little more range. He'll go all the way to the buckle. There we go. Like that. That's getting better. I just wanted to get out a little bit longer yet, still on that neck. There, and use the side. There we go. That's what I want to see right there. Now ask him to halt and dismount. And What a good fellow. And you may dismount and come down and talk about it. That was a great job. Good job, buddy. Much improved. Good job, Trigger. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a good ride. That was a good ride. It was really nice. So what I'd like to see you do is continue on. Now, obviously, and I could even, even see from here his back with your weight actually sunk a little more than with her. We could actually physically see it, you know, it's kind of sinking out from underneath him a little bit. So he's still got a lot of strengthening issues. So... You know, once again, every day working without and putting her up again. And yeah. then once you wait till the next time, I, if we're going to go again next week or sometime, give, give it a few more days. And the next time with her on your own, do both directions. I just wanted to do the good direction today so that he wouldn't get too wet. He'd still yeah. have something for you to you to work with, you know. So did you did you say you wanted me to get on him or you want me to wait till next week to get on? I think it would be good if you if you just put her up on him like once or twice throughout the week. It doesn't have to be every day. Once again, he's building strength every day. He doesn't need to have weight on his back every day at this point. So Got I say it. every and certainly no more than every other day at this point. You know, maybe every three days. So maybe if twice between now and when I see you again next week, if you can. But once again, as long as you're getting him out and getting him working correctly over back, that's what's important. Every day lighting up that back and letting those muscles build correctly. But that was a huge improvement. Really huge nice. Huge improvement. Hey, Ron, could you feel the difference? Because I feel a huge difference from when I used to get on him to now. Like his back feel, just feels night and day stronger. Like I could feel a difference just getting on him and walking. Yeah, exactly. Like the walk feels really good. I was actually sitting on top of the horse instead of inside of the horse. Yeah, instead of through it. <laughs> right. My feet weren't touching the ground. It's amazing. Right. <laughs> All right, you guys. Great job. Any questions about him today? Uh, nope. We're going to do a quick rider change. and. Okay. Be good. Sounds good. I'll go feed my pets and be back in 10. Okay. Sounds great. Sounds good.
We're live. <laughs> Will? I think Will's frozen. Something happened. Maybe? Will, can you hear us? I know, I saw him move. We can't hear you. Yeah. You can hear it in the ring. Hey, Will. And we're live. Okay, hey, everybody, we're back. And uh, this time we've got Calvin coming up with Darcy. How's it gone with him, Darcy? It's gone well. Um, I ended up, you know, working him maybe four or five times this week. And um, I got on him twice this week just to walk him around the ring. And he was very good, actually. He, he, did, a, he did a good job. He didn't pull any of his... Uh, antics and I also got past some of that issue I was having last week where um, when I was walking and I would ask him to move over and he'd trot off and then when we were trotting and I'd ask him to move over and he would canter um, I got past mm -hmm. some of that at the walk I didn't try a trot this week at all so. Great. excellent okay let's start with some working hands okay He's certainly ready to go right into a stretch. Very nice. 
and just go all the way around like this, just keeping it a big stretch, trying to maximize the step. And then when you get down to the other end, turn down by the center line and leg heel to the right. Very nice. That's a good stretch, good activity in the walk. Really nice. I'll go ahead and turn by the center line there in leg yield. Sorry, I missed it. That's all right. Let's try it again from the other end. That's all right. Um, there you go right there. Really nicely done. Very nice. Really nice active step. Now on the circle at this end, I'd like you to bring him up into a working walk. So just shorten the reins. Hard as far as getting that outside range where you need it to be because you got to put that hand and lift it. And we're going to bring him up from the stretch a little bit and see if he'll come up into the working walk for you. <laughs> there you go. Shorten your reins a little bit more, especially your inside one. There you go, like that. Bring him up a little bit like that in the frame and get a little more contact with the outside rein by softening the give and take a little bit. So anytime you feel something pulling, that, that's where you want to give and take. So. It's never both sides. We never want to seesaw the bit. So it's always one steady in the other. And we soften on the side that we feel the most resistance. That's usually the inside, but not always. Now let him go back all the way down into the stretch again and lengthen the walk around the circle. There. And down the next long side, shoulder four, down the long side going away from us. Try to bring the shoulders in a little bit more, not quite enough. Good contact with your outside rein. Try that again on the next long side. Let his pole come up a little bit. Bring him a little more into a working walk if that helps you. <clears throat> We've got to bring his shoulders in a little bit more off the rail. That's very dramatic. For some reason, the camera is not following you. Where are you? Oh, the camera's. Hey, Ron. Camera's not following. It's trying to find you again. Every time I go down to that end, there you are. <laughs> That's a good position there. Remember, never more bend in the neck than in the middle of the body. So a little more contact with the outside brain, a little less inside. Ron, this beacon over here is not on again. And go ahead and circle here again and go all the way down in the stretch. And now let's bring them up a little bit. So bring them up into more of a working walk. Stay with them, shorten your reins. There you go. Bring them up a little bit. There you go. And you're just softening them with your hand. Just, you're slightly giving and taking so he doesn't pull on you like that. Or if you feel him pull, just give and take for a moment. Move his hindquarters a little bit round on your circle there so you get him a little more on his shoulder in. That will help you to get the neck up a little bit as he pushes up to the back. Go ahead. Okay. Just 
stepping over. There you go. That's more like it. One more circle there. That's better. Now let him stretch all the way down again. There you go. And lengthen the stride as you do. And then as you come to the end down here, just go ahead and halt and change directions. So on the circle here to start with, just let him stretch all the way downwards. A little more active behind this direction, kind of lost a little bit of that active step. There we go. There, good step now, right there, good. For those of you watching, watch the hawks and watch how they change. I like that. And go ahead and go large down the long side. Turn by the center line at the top and leg yield to the left. Good, there, good. Beginnings, good, good. Trying to step over nicely, very nice. Keeping the shoulder in advance, just as you should, like that. Very nicely done. And then come on down to the circle at this end and begin to bring him up a little bit. And we'll be, see how we can develop a working walk with him. Let's see where we can bring it to. There you go, like that. Going up a little bit. So I thought there is probably pretty good for the first one right there. Keep that come up a little bit. Bring him up if you're out with your outside rein a little bit. So you have to get that outside rein. I know it's difficult when the horse is taller than you are. There you go, like that. Now go ahead and let him go all the way down and open the walk again. That's better. Now bring him up a little bit again. Try to come up about midway. There we go, like that. There you go, good, right there. Now shoulder in, going down the next long side, going away from. See if you can maintain that. Good. Keep that going. That's better. Don't let the shoulder fall back. Push the hindquarters out a little bit. Bring the shoulders in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> better towards the end there. There you go. There you go. Starting to get it down. Now go ahead and let him stretch all the way down and lengthen the walk down the next long side. For some reason, the camera goes a little crazy when we get down to that end. I like that. Very nice. And as you come down to this end, you may stop on the center line down here and we'll start our lunging. Okay. Did that warm you up? That did warm me up. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard when you're sitting, my feet get really cold. Uh, okay. So You round guys are harder than I. I think about all the days I went fox hunting out in the snow. <laughs> I don't know if I could do that stuff anymore. <laughs> um, can you get my side ring? So I'll say there's almost nothing I like better than a day when it when you have a nice thick snow coming down, you know what I mean? And but there's yeah. no wind, you know. Those were some of my favorite days. Yeah, it's I like the snow. I don't yeah. mind it at all. We don't get a lot of sun here. That's the hardest part. Yeah. Um, but I've been cross country skiing lately. Whenever we get oh, in nice. snow, and it's really fun. 
that would be the other one. Oh. Are you just doing it on your own property, or you have places you can go from where you live, or you have to go somewhere else? I'm just doing it on my own property. Great, right, yeah. Which is even better, if you ask me. I walk out my front door, and I put my skis on, and I go. <laughs> that sounds perfect to me. I mean, even before the COVID thing, I was kind of like, okay, well... I'd like to be in Fiji, but I don't want to take the flight to get there. <laughs> I know. Uh, no. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> now I do. Yeah, and I have an audience every morning when I go cross-country skiing. The horses all just stare at me. <laughs> oh, Ben, what's she doing out there? And, of course, Reese, who's scared of everything, gets a little nervous about it for some reason. I don't understand <laughs> what is to be scared of. <laughs> okay. To be honest, I feel like his good side, bad side, I can't decide it anymore. Well, that's um, good. That means he's starting to even up. Yeah, yeah, a lot. Well, that's, and that's good news. <laughs> he's still different from side to side, but it's, I guess right is almost a little harder, it seems. Um, mm. But left, he gets a little rushy sometimes. Right, he gets a little slow sometimes. Um, mm. But otherwise, he seems kind of even. Good. That's that's our goal. If they're starting to seem even, that tells you the back is starting to come up in the right place. Otherwise, they wouldn't be the same on both sides. You have to go to the bathroom. Maybe. He always does. He went pee already, so. Okay, come on. Well, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's more like, I just don't want to work right now. Yeah, we gave you the benefit of the doubt. I like that. Yeah, good. This is usually his like faster side, but he's being really a little you know. slower. Very nice. Come on. Oh. I feel like he has to go. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Just a little slow to emerge today. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Good job. Now he's ready to work. Exactly. You can he see always does. He always does. He gets that <clears throat> first pile out. He's like, okay. And you can go ahead and ask him to trot. Come on, trot. Good boy. All right. I notice how quickly he's starting to bring his belly up. He's already starting to pull that up a bit for you there. That's excellent. Good. Very nice, right there. Come on. Uh, 
That's really good. Really nice stretch. That's it. And let him walk. And walk. And walk. Good boy. That's right back into the stretch. That's excellent. Now go ahead and halt and change directions. Okay. I think you told me to remind you that you wanted me to shorten side reins, I think, this time. That's what we're going to do, but we're going to take him the other way for a second. Part. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. Big yawn. Good job, Calvin. Okay, ready? Walk on. Walk on. Good boy. Walk on. Funny how doing in hand work, he gets really speedy when I'm doing a walk, but when you put mm. him on a lunge line, he just slows right down. Unless it's my imagination. <laughs> okay. Come on. There you go. Nice. Come on. Walk on. Nice day, very nice. Go ahead and ask him to trot. And trot. And trot. Good boy. Good job. Very nice. interesting to watch him in that you know once in a while in this direction he'll sort of pin his ears back a little bit like a little piss but as soon as he gets back in the stretch they become nice and floppy relaxed listening to you right there is really good keep that if he's starting to have a little bounce to his stride you probably can't hear it but he was also so he's starting to have a little bit of a bounce to his stride yeah which means he's starting to push himself off the ground a little bit. Good boy. And once again, how quickly his belly is starting to come up now. It's really good. Keep that. Now go ahead and halt on the center line there. Let him walk and then halt. And walk. Whatever you like. And what we're going to do today is experiment and see if he's ready to come up a little bit. So what we're going to do is put the side reins up off of the D rings off of the saddle. Okay. And roll. And see if he will stretch into the contact. Whoa. So you may, um, you can probably just unhook them from what, you just leave those little loops because you won't be able to put those on. Then put the straps through the D rings on the saddle. You know what I'm talking about, which are the rings up at the pommel? Yeah, like here, but I, I am trying to figure out how we're going to do that, right? Right here? Yeah, try just unhooking to see if the strap will fit through those rings. Oh, I see, I see. Will it run? I think it probably will, right? But the question is, is it going to be long enough when we do? That's... Um, we might need... So we might have to come up, but let me see. Let me see. Does that, do they fit through there, Ron? So it's a little tight, but he can get it. Okay. Should I try it? Faster? And then the question is going to be whether they're going to be long enough when we do that. See, see what happens when you get it all the way to the buckle. How short is it going to have to be? Mm, that's 
a little bit too short. So we're going to have to put a little strap on there. You have some more of that string sitting around someplace. It's a, that's going to be a little too short. So we need to we need to have about a six inch loop on the on there to make that about right. I would think. Either that or just tie another piece of bailing twine around. Yeah, that's what I mean. A piece of, uh, uh, that's okay. what exactly what I mean. A piece of bailing twine. So just put a piece of bailing twine on there on each one. Just be try to be sure they're about the same length. Sure. Yep. And as I said, it should be about probably probably need about six inches. I would say to make it about right or a foot longer is better than shorter. We can always shorten the side reins. That's true. So this will be the first time that we've done that with the source. So this gives you a good test to see where he's at. In other words, is he ready to come up in the frame a little bit and really maintain it? If he is, then he'll stretch down into it, but with a higher frame. If not, <laughs> then he's ready. Then we have to put him back down. Again. What would we do without bailing twine? I know. True. <laughs> Ron's probably grabbing one off a bale or digging through. I'm one of those people that I can't stand going into like a pile of hay and seeing bailing twine half like off and thrown all over. Right, the everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very good at picking it up. It's never sitting around. This is another thing that, you know, flash nose bands are good for those old, you know, have an old flash nose band. Of course, you need two of them, but. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have one. I just don't have two. Hmm. That's why I thought of it, because I saw that bridle you have on there that looks like it was a drop nose band bridle. Yeah, I just took it off. Yeah. I'm curious if you have any it. strong opinions about. Um, all these bridles that are out now with like, there's all these anatomical ones that are supposed to avoid facial nerves like around here and some are really weird. Like this strap is one strap, these two. Mm. Um, I don't know. I'm just curious if you've looked at any of those or seen any of them. I've seen a lot of them, a lot of gimmicky nonsense, especially all these bits, you know, you know, yeah. my major peeve is those mylar bits, which are just the biggest I mean, they're made for people to, who hang on the horse's mouths. I mean, just, you know, same thing with him with all this bridle comfort. The people weren't hanging on the horse's mouths all the time. The bridle would be perfectly comfortable, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But when people are taught, you know, and this is something that's totally within, that started in the last 20 years. This thing of, especially in dressage people, being told to hold against the mouth of the horse all the time. Yeah. It's absurd. I mean, I, you know. <laughs> Show me a book by anybody any good that ever said to do that. <laughs> you know, what we want a horse to be light, you know. Yeah. How is it ever gonna be light if you're constantly holding against its mouth? You know. It won't be. So you could probably just put them through there and put a knot on the end or something just so we get them pretty close to the same. probably cut that little worn one off because even if I have to I could always double this one if I need to no I mean if I go back down that looks about right Look about right. Yep. Okay. Okay. 
same side we were on, Will? Yep, be fine. He's like, what's Either one. Noise? Okay, walk on. Quite good. So as we see with the side reins like this, it much more mimics how we actually ride. So if our training has been correct, the horse will still seek the contact down, even though he could put his head straight in the air if he wanted to. Very nice. Very nicely done. <laughs> now ask him to trot. And let's see how he handles this. Ready? Nice, he's seeking the contact there. That's what we want to have happen. And trot. And trot. So we can see that doing it like this, in no way does this tie the horse's head down. He's quite free. But we want to see if his yep. training is far enough along, he'll stretch into the contact the way we're seeing him do there. There you go. Very nice, like that, good. So now we're beginning to just limit how far he can stretch down. Good boy. Very nice, like that. Like that, keep it going. Very nicely done. Keep that. Very nice. Right there. Good job. Keep it going. And notice he still is completely relaxed in the underside of his neck. Yes, really good, good there. Job. Keep that. Like that. Very nice. Keep it going. A little more active. So you can get a little more push out of him. There we go, like that. Very nicely done. Excellent. Just a little bit more active again. There we go, like that. Really well done. Right there. Excellent. Very nice. Keep it going. <laughs> That's really good. Now bring him back to a walk. And walk. Good job. Very good, boy. That was fantastic. You may halt and change directions. Whoa. Exactly what we wanted to have happen. So if he were not ready to do this, he would just run around as he did in the beginning there with his head up in the air because you see when the side reins are like this, they do not pull the horse down. They're not forcing his head down. They're just giving him something to stretch into and limiting the degree to which he can stretch. Walk on. That's it. Walk on. Good job, right there. And ask him to trot. And trot. Really good. I like that. Very nice. It's a good working trot for him, right there. Notice how he's still completely relaxed in the underside of his jaw. 
That's really good. Keep that going. Really nicely done right there. Excellent. Now this is exactly what should happen if the horse has been prepared to do this. That's really good. Really good, right there. That's fantastic. Really good work. Now let him walk again. Good job, Calvin. And halt, and we're ready for you to mount up, and we're going to just take the side reins completely off today. Okay. Okay. That was really good. Boy, Calvin. Ron, are you going to have any problems with the camera since you can't lunge and... I take it we're lunging still, right? No, no, you're getting on. You're, no, you're, we're just riding today. Oh, I'm not going to have Ron? Nope. Oh, okay. Wow. We're going to see how it goes. But that was really excellent, what he just did there. That shows us a lot about him. Where are my reins? Oh, there they are. Good job, Calvin. Good job. Another little treat for you. That's a big horse. So now with him, what I'd like you to do is every other day, you're going to always start stretching him all the way in the lower figure. But every other day, you can bring him up into that frame just like we did. Okay. As long as it all is going along smoothly. Calvin, you can bring your foot up. You're like mid stride. Here, bring your foot up. There we go. More thing I'm going to give you, Ron. I'll give you this too. And we're all set. <coughs> okay, Calvin. step and whoa. Okay. 
What a good boy he is to mount. Yeah, he is. And hey, we'll go ahead and go large in the walk, working for the stretch to start off with. There he is. And we'll just go large all the way around once, just like this, working on the deep stretch as much as possible. I don't know if Ron can hear me or not, but this, this is where we keep losing the picture down towards the end of the arena down there. What's going on he's with that? He's back. I think he left to go do something, but he's back now. Okay. He's just kind of manually doing the camera. Yeah, that's the way to go. Yeah, it's getting better now. There, it's almost got your head. <laughs> and just walking again. Very nice. And once again, softening them a little bit with your inside ray in there, asking them to stretch a little bit deeper like that. Good. As you go large. And just like we did in the work in hand, we're going to turn by the center line and do a leg heel to the left. Very nice. Very nice. Good job. Very nicely done. Just like that. Very good. Very nice. Keep that. Change the rain across the next diagonal, keeping the stretch where you have it now, if possible. So he's stretched, but he's not just on a loose rein. The stretch is into the contact. They always remember that. Riding around. A lot of people have the wrong idea about what we do here. They think that we're just throwing away the reins. Nothing could be further from the truth. We want the horse to stretch into the contact and maintain that light contact without pulling on us or our, us pulling on them. Change the rein on the diagonal now. Good boy. Really nice. And after you change on the diagonal, we'll turn by the center line today and leg heel to the right. Very nicely done. Very nice. And very light. Very nice. Now on the circle at this end, I want you just to short, just like we did, only with the side reins. Now you're going to do that. I want you to just bring his pole up, just like you guys did in the working hand from the ground. We're just letting it come up a little bit, but we want to always keep that feeling of him wanting to stretch in the contact like that. So you're now you're just limiting how far he can go down. To come up a little bit more again. He's starting to stretch on his own. So you decide when the stretches come now. So don't let him just decide to stretch out again. You have to start deciding when that's going to happen. There you go. But that's really quite nice. Not a bad working walk. You can have a little more uh, flexion or softness at the jaw and pole, but that's not bad for him right there. That's really quite good. So keeping this walk, we'll call this a working walk for today and go large in this working walk. He's up from the stretch. And see if you can just maintain this softly. And when you go back to the other end again, down the center line, by, by the center line, of course, I never care if you hit exactly the center line, whatever feels comfortable that you can keep the rhythm in the turn. And again, do a leg heel to the right, this time just keeping his pole up a little bit. Of course, try to be conscious that we're not just destroying the movement. So if you find that his pole is up and He's starting to slow down too much. You know, you have to little tap with your leg or whip, back it up a little bit. If need be, you have to lower the head and neck and redefine the walk again and start again. 
Turning here and leg yielding to the right. Always looking where you want to go. Pick a spot on that wall over there that you want to get to. Good. And then ask your body to ask the horse to move it over there. That's really very good. Now let him stretch all the way down and lengthen the walk again. What a different horse than we had a couple of months ago when we started this process. Yeah. Really nice. A little bit deeper into the stretch on the circle once. Like that, a little deeper there, like that. Good job. Very nice. Get him a little deeper, let it go. So there's really a big difference. You can stretch him out a little bit longer. Soften him a little bit. Remember the contact. There you go, like that. There, all the way down there, like that. That's what we want to see. Now I want you to shorten your reins and bring them back up again. Only to the point, of course, that you can maintain the rhythm of the step. So if you feel the step deteriorating because we're bringing his pole up, then we know we have to ask for a little more. If that doesn't do it, we have to let the neck go back down again. But right there. Good. Keep that. Stay on the circle there. Bring his pole up just a little bit more. Shorten your reins a little bit. Like that. Very nice. And of course, when you feel like it, you soften him a little, if you feel a little tension on one side or the other, then you soften by just giving and taking a little bit. That's really quite nice. Shorten your reins a little more. Let it come up a little bit more. And let me see if he'll soften his jaw a little more for you and relax his pole. There, that's quite nice. Just right there. Not bad for him at all. Could be a little more, but for right now, that's fantastic. Prepare to trot. Stay on the circle there. And ask him to trot right. Once again, don't worry about the upwards transition. That's not going to be beautiful right now, but just make it as best you can. Now try to soften him all the way into the stretch on the circle. That's it. Keep going. Keep rising. Let's soften him a little more with your inside rein. Just give and take that inside rein a little bit more. Keep him on your circle. Remember to keep your outside shoulder a little bit forward like that. So your shoulders parallel the shoulders of the horse. We need to move his hindquarters out a little bit on the circle. Easy does it. Hey, hey, hey. And shrug. And shrug. Just a little sort of excited about that leg on there. And again, keep rising on your circle there. And soften him a little bit. There you go. Like that. Now he's starting to get there. Good. Now let your inside hand come open to the inside. That is, that is let move your inside hand from your elbow to the inside so you can feel. That's what we call an open leading rein at this level. So you're just bringing your inside. So your hand kind of turns over a little bit. So your, your, your fingertips are up. There you go. Like that. Soften him a little bit. And remembering to get a little contact on that outside rein. That's getting better there all the time. There we go. There we're getting the stretch all the way down. Good. Very nice. Like that. You got it. Now ease him back to a walk. And walk. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Very legs. nice. To do that. Now let him stretch out in the walk and go large. And we're going to change across the next diagonal in the walk. That was really good. First time without the side reins. Yeah. Right. Or at least with me watching. Great job. Something to be said for patience. Yep. And change the rain across the diagonal. And go large, so you come all the way back down in a circle at the other end there. You said circle down here? Uh, down at the other end where the cameras follow you oh, easier. Okay. Back where we were before. Okay. For some reason the camera keeps freaking out when we go down there. Yeah. 
really nice there. Really nice walk. This is such a nice horse for you, Darcy. He's turning into something really nice. Yeah, I do He's really love guy. him. There. And now on the circle to the right here, I want you to just <laughs> once again back in a walk. Right? You said a working walk. Yeah, just beginning to bring him up a little bit about there. There you go, like that. Very nice, right there. That's super, right there. He's even softening his jaw a little for you. That's really good, right there. That's about where you'd want it to be, about right there. For his level development, that's really quite good, right there. Keep that. Excellent. Staying on the circle where we are here, prepare to trot. And whenever you're ready, just ask him to trot. Don't worry about the transition being perfect. Just make it as best you can. That wasn't bad at all. And staying on the circle, ask him to soften, just like you did in the other direction, using that open leading rein a little bit. Let your right hand come open to the inside like that. So in the beginning of training, our, our aids are kind of inside aids. And later, later they become lateral aids. That is, we use the outside hand, outside rein, outside leg, rather. There, and keep that on the circle. And let him stretch all the way down. Really nicely done. Really nicely done. Right there. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now bring him up from that. That's fantastic. So now just shorten your range, try to keep that same trot and just bring his pole up. Try not to lose the trot that you have as you bring the pole up. That's the, right there. That's beautiful. Beautiful, Darcy, right there. Wonderful. That's an excellent working trot for him today. Excellent, right there. Really nice, like that. Now stretch him all the way down again. Beautiful. Ease him back to a walk. <laughs> and you may go to the center and dismount and pat him on the neck. That was fantastic. Great job, Hugh. Good job, Calvin. <laughs> He's like, that was Anywhere there, get fine. Off. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. I mean, not so much as an ear back in the wrong place, no more of this pissiness about the ring, about going out the door. I mean, you've gotten on the other side of all of your problems, it seems. Really, really nice. Well on your way. And I really liked this horse. For you too. <laughs> yeah, I really do nice too. Guy. And quite a nice mover. I mean, most, a, a lot of these horses, well, they're all better movers if they get over their back, but some of them are not great movers one way or another. But, um, you know, he's really quite a nice mover when he gets there and trims up and really yeah. can look like an athlete. So congratulations. You brought him up into a working trot by yourself today with no <laughs> side reins, no nothing else. That was really fantastic. And not so much as a bauble out of him about not wanting to do it. So yeah. really great job. Yeah. Thanks. Any questions today, you guys? I don't. Um, I guess just my, what my homework might be for the week. So I think you yeah. might have already said, right? Um, yeah. So what I said before was every other day, do the lunging up like that. Okay. And you can start riding as long as it's going as smoothly as it went today. Okay. You know, you can ride him after, the, after you do the work in hand, the lunging. Try riding him off just like we did with nothing. And just work on just being able to bring him up into those working frames. Now, if things start to get difficult or if he starts to suddenly get you know to think that oh i'm going to take control then just just take a step back in other words just okay you know go back to lunging or if he should get difficult with you at all in the ring just go back to having Ron, having ron lunge you again for a little reminder i'm hoping that doesn't happen but if okay. it does know that you know you don't want to ever just get in a big fight about what you're doing you want to take a step back and reestablish what you were already doing and then you'll find that it's much easier to go forward. That's what happens to most people today is they just start, they get to a level they don't realize that we simply can't do what they're asking to do or isn't ready. Then they end up with a big battle on their hands and they yeah. either win it or they lose it. And if they yeah. lose the battle, then they're really in trouble, you know, but even if they win it, it's usually not, you know, because if they've won it, they've simply forced the horse into a phony yeah. frame and now everything will be even worse than it was before. Yeah, you know? exactly. So when, when it, training is correct, it's never, a big whip them up deal that we see people doing, especially in dressage these days. It should be just as calm at Grand Prix as it is at this level, you know. Yeah. And it's easy for the horse to do the things we ask them to do if we keep building on one thing on another and we have a good foundation of the work that we do. Yeah. Great. Great. Questions, Ron? 
I know. I can't hear you all of a sudden, Ron. <laughs> well, <laughs> but great job for both of you guys today. I'm sorry, sorry, Ron, I can't hear what you're saying. Just have good, because I'm excited about getting back on Trigger. Yeah. Hopefully next week we'll look a little bit different. Yeah. Well, great job, you guys, today. Shall we uh, shoot for next week, weather permitting? Just yep. just let me know the day ahead of time or something like that. But really great job with both of you today. Couldn't be happier with where we got to. You're really beginning to see the culmination of the work coming together, I hope. You know, you just see you. how it is. But just adding that, you know, making everything a little better every day, pretty soon it's a lot better. You know, the problem yeah. is people try to make big changes in horses. They want too much too soon. You know, they can't, the horse can't give you anything that it can't, doesn't actually have, so to speak. You know what I mean? Instead of you can't, you know, just suddenly take them and expect they're going to do collected trot or something or whatever the case may be. You know, it just, but if, without difficulty. Once again, if your work has been correctly, it's just as easy as this was. When the horse is ready to collect one day, he will just collect. It won't be a battle. Of, you won't have to whip them up or yeah. any of the nonsense that we see people trying who think they're collecting their horses when they're really all they're doing is shortening the stride. Big yeah. difference. All right, you guys, great job. I look forward to seeing you next week. It's a, it's a new world. America's yeah. at a new place forward for everybody. <laughs> great job, you guys. See you soon. 21, 21. Yeah, that's right. It's going to be a great year. <laughs> All right, you guys. See you soon. Wonderful work yep. today. I hope everybody watching that enjoyed it. It was a good moment today for everybody. Great job. Thanks. You are welcome. Good job, Cal.